In this video, we will look at tunnel rats during the Vietnam War. Here, we will look at what a tunnel rat is, the qualifications to be a tunnel rat, their mission, their equipment, and their tactics in entering the Viet Cong tunnels. It is undeniable that the forces of America, Australia, and New Zealand had a hard time defeating and subduing the Viet Cong soldiers and North Vietnamese troops because of the tunnels they made. Due to the very narrow Viet Cong tunnels, the forces of America, Australia, and New Zealand were forced to use volunteer specialists with small bodies that fit in the Viet Cong tunnels. But it doesn't mean that when you are a small soldier, you will be sent immediately under the tunnels. In fact, they have done this before, but many of them were injured or killed because of accidents under the tunnel and not because of fighting the enemy. They also tried sending dogs into the tunnels but failed because they couldn't avoid the booby traps. And the soldiers who go under the tunnels are called tunnel rats. Initially, they were actually called tunnel ferrets. It is said that a reporter heard the story wrong. Instead of ferret, it thought it was rat, so they were called tunnel rat. To be a tunnel rat, you must have a height of 5'5 five, five below, but must be strong. It is not only physical strength that is needed. You also need to have a strong mind because you will enter a very tight and very dark place. And worse, at any time, something bad will happen to you. Your reflexes must also be fast so you can immediately avoid the dangerous things below. And you should also know what things you should avoid eating inside the tunnels. You should also avoid drinking alcohol, smoking, and chewing gum because it dulls the sense of smell and there's a strong chance that the enemy Viet Cong will immediately smell you even if it's very dark under the tunnel. The missions of the tunnel rats are gather important information such as what can be seen inside the tunnels, get or destroy equipment that cripples the operation of the Viet Cong soldiers, rescuing a comrade captured by the Viet Cong if there are any, and destroying the tunnels or, if not possible, denying the Viet Cong any further use of the tunnels. Let's take a look at the equipment of the tunnel rats. Every tunnel rat has his own preference for what gear he carries under, but they often leave behind their helmets, ammunition pouches, water pouches, even their uniform coats. Talking about guns, what they bring is only short arms fire, such as the M1911 45 caliber pistol, but this is too noisy and the muzzle flash is too bright, which blinds and deafens the tunnel rat, so most of the tunnel rats would prefer the M1917 38 caliber revolver with silencer. Later on, they also used communications wire, compass, and bayonet. Sometimes, the tunnel rat also carries a gas mask because the Viet Cong soldiers also release poisonous gas inside the tunnel. But other tunnel rats don't like the gas mask because it's deafening and also because their breath seems to be too loud and also limits what they can see and hear. Let's look at the tunnel rat's tactics in entering the tunnels. Often, it is another group of soldiers who look for the entrances of the tunnels. Since the entrances are covered by camouflaged covers, it is difficult to find the entrances, so they need the help of dogs. When an entrance is found, the tunnel rat prepares. Before entering the entrance, they often throw a fragmentation grenade at it to somehow destroy any booby trap at the entrance. This is also a way to know if the tunnel is strong enough because there are tunnels that are poorly constructed and in danger of collapsing. But dropping this grenade will also alert the Viet Cong below. 
Now, the tunnel rat will decide whether to wear a gas mask or not. Let us say that he will not wear it. The tunnel rat will now enter with his head first with the help of his colleagues. He carries his gun, flashlight, bayonet, explosives, and communication wire that will be the tunnel rat's guide on his way out. Sometimes, when the tunnel rat is new, a more experienced tunnel rat will follow to assist. This second tunnel rat is also the one who makes the sketch of the tunnel and also writes down how many turns and connected tunnels they enter. This is where the ordeal of a tunnel rat begins. Wait, the video is not broken. It is really dark inside the tunnel, and because it is dark, the tunnel rat has to turn on his flashlight. This flashlight has its red lens removed so that the Viet Cong enemy cannot immediately recognize it's the enemy coming because they use white light or a candle. Since the tunnel is zigzagged, it is highly likely that a Viet Cong soldier is waiting at every turn, so the reaction of the tunnel rat should be quick in a possible hand-to-hand -hand combat. If the tunnel rat does fire his gun, he should not fire more than three shots so the enemy will not know when he is reloading. If there are no Viet Cong soldiers, there may be scorpion trap like this along the way with scorpions. When its strip wire is stripped, the lid will open and the scorpions will come out stinging the tunnel rat. There's also this snake trap where a venomous green pit viper is tied to a stick above the tunnel. When the tunnel rat sees it, he can kill it with his bayonet, but if he doesn't notice it, then it's over. There are insects and animals that naturally live in the tunnels that distract the tunnel rat's focus, such as poisonous centipedes, rats, spiders, ants, and even bats. If the first level is already scary and triggers severe claustrophobia, the second and third levels are even worse. Again, it's still possible that there are traps here, just like this rolling pointy spike. If the tunnel rat gets stuck here, it will surely have its arms or legs cut off. If not the rolling punchy spike, there can also be a grenade trap like this. If the tunnel rat is not careful, he will hit the trip wire of the grenade and it will explode immediately because it has no safety pin and delay element. When the tunnel rat gets or finishes his mission, if possible, the tunnel will be destroyed using explosives, but because the tunnel is so robust, they can only destroy the entrance. To make the tunnel unusable for several months, the tunnel rat fills the tunnel with a riot control agent, such as tear gas powder that is made into an aerosol and bombarded with a blower. When the tunnel rat comes out, if he is covered in mud that his colleagues can no longer recognize him, he has to whistle the signal that only them know about so that his colleagues know that he is not an enemy. Take note that the tunnel rats did not immediately become experts when they started their search and destroy mission of the tunnels. They changed their tactics in clearing tunnels depending on their experience each time they entered. From 1965 to 1972, an estimated 700 tunnel rats launched search and destroy missions. 36 of them died and 200 were injured. The sad thing is that Many tunnel rats also got sick as a result of the Agent Orange used by the U.S. in Vietnam. We will talk about Agent Orange in another video. Also, watch our video about Viet Cong tunnels and Vietnam War booby traps.